Google dropped a huge announcement. $15 billion allocated over a period of five years to build out one gigawatt of AI and other data center capacity in Andhra Pradesh. So very clearly, there is something interesting going on in India's data center market. Data center. India's data center boom. India's data center capacity is set for a massive surge. World's largest Jamnagar data center. While Bangalore happens to be India's IT and tech capital, Mumbai on the other hand, also India's data center capital. Approximately 52% of the 1.35 gigawatts of data center capacity that India has today is in Mumbai alone. So the question is, what does it take to build data centers in India? How can you as a retail or individual investor gain exposure to this AI super cycle through the data center asset class? Welcome to Breakdown. This is part one all about data centers in India. Before we start today's video, we'd like to give a shout out to Zero One Network. So big thank you to them. And with that, let's get into today's video. A data center is very simply a warehouse size network of interconnected computers. And these data centers power everything that you do on your smartphone or on your PC. Now let's visualize what a data center is. You can imagine a large parcel of land that has been purchased by a real estate developer. It is then surrounded by a concrete wall and barbed wire and has a single entrance with security. So once you get through the security, you will see a warehouse style type nondescript building. This server room contains a large number of computers that have been stripped down to just the chip and the board. And these are placed in something called racks. And most importantly, the data center has cooling. You can just imagine that when you touch your laptop or place your laptop on your lap during a flight, after an hour or so, you start to feel the heat dissipate through your legs. And just imagine what happens when thousands of these types of machines are running close to each other. It produces a lot of heat and therefore you need cooling. The prime example of a data center in India is Yota Data Services NM1 facility that is based in Navi Mumbai, India's only live tier 4 certified facility. The size of Yota's NM1 data center is 8.2 lakh square feet and the energy that it consumes is equivalent to 20 full size shopping malls. There are different types of data centers, namely co-location, cloud, Cloud, AI and Edge. Edge is the simplest form of data center where it runs very basic workflows to run things like traffic lights and IoT analytics. The concept of a co-location data center means that the operator of the data center is not installing the chips, but instead rents out the infrastructure to a third party to come and set up its own chips and its own connectivity to be able to run workloads for itself. The next type of data center is a cloud data center center, which is typically what you have accessed through the AWS software dashboard. The final type of data center is the AI data centers, which tend to have some more cutting edge chips to either run training workloads or to run inference workloads. But Yotta Data Services NM1 facility is a co-location center, which means multiple banks and other financial institutions and any other person that wishes to use or rent data center space operates their workloads through the NM1 facility. A a lot of us perform hundreds of actions every day and the extent of work that are done by data centers is fully obfuscated to us. And therefore, a typical data center has four key components. The first is real estate. The second is power. The third is connectivity. And the final part of it is manpower because what if something went wrong at that data center? And this should also now give you an idea of why it has emerged as a prime location for data centers. Let's start with real estate. You would know about something called MIDC, the Maharashtra Industrial Development Corridor, which has made procurement of land parcels much easier than in other parts of the country. The next aspect is availability of talent. Mumbai has enough engineering colleges and so does Pune has adequate supply of engineers to be able to work at these data centers. But all of 
this is fine. The most important driver of the decision is the cost of power. On average, the cost of power in Mumbai is 40% cheaper than the typical cost of power that most other data centers operating in Asia would have. This is incredible leverage for the operators of the data center. There are two more aspects that make Mumbai the prime hub. The first of these is that Mumbai is a landing point for the internet cables from both sides of the globe. And therefore, when you're trying to build data centers for cloud or internet usage, which is streaming, the latency is the lowest. The latency in Mumbai is also low because of the proximity to demand. If you look at both Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange, they are located in Mumbai. You look at Hotstar with its streaming volume is also located in Mumbai. So again, because the servers are so closely packed in Mumbai, latency is low and sometimes a network effect ends up forming, which is what happened in Mumbai. It had the proximity to the telco and internet junction point. It had the proximity to demand that was then aided by the availability of power at low cost, availability of land through ease of procurement and availability of talent. We now want to cover three very interesting facts for today's video. The first among these is that in 2015, our consumption of global mobile data was approximately 4 to 5%. In a short period of 4 to 5 years, this went from 4 to 5% to 20%. From less than 1 GB a month to almost 25 GB a month right now. And on top of this, India even today has the lowest cost of mobile data at approximately 18 to 19 rupees per GB of mobile data. So while we account for 20% of the global mobile data consumption, India today only accounts for 3% data center capacity in India. And therefore, when people say vocal for local or build in India, I actually think this needs to start at the infrastructure layer where we really need to build more data center capacity so that we can run our country's workloads within the geographical boundaries of our country. You might say, okay, where 20% of mobile data consumption, 3% of the data centers, maybe there is a cost issue here. And the answer actually is not true. India is the second cheapest location. We are only second place by a narrow margin to China. And on top of this, we are the fourth cheapest place on the planet to get access to power. And as we had discussed earlier, states like Maharashtra are able to deliver almost a 40% savings on the cost of power as the result of subsidies and other benefits that they provide. And since power is a major driver of operating expense for a data center, this actually means that India is a very lucrative market to build data centers Let's move to the next part, which is the three tailwinds that are driving this demand for data centers in India. The first among these is the projection that the average mobile data consumed per month per user is going to grow from 25 GB to almost 50 GB by 2030, increasing penetration of 5G connectivity in India. The next one is AI usage. The final one is a smartphone penetration story. Today, approximately 75% of India is on a smartphone. It's expected to reach approximately 85%. The next reason why you will see a data center capex boom in India is regulations. The first among these was the Payments Data Localization Act that was passed by the RBI in 2018 that required any data about domestic transactions made by Indian citizens to be domiciled within India. The next push came in 2023 in two parts. When you had the data localization norms regulation that was passed by SEBI for all institutions that were regulated by SEBI. And in 2023, the government of India doubled down with the DPDP Act of 2023, which was equivalent to the EU GDPR Act of 2016. The final part to this is state level subsidies when combined with central government regulation is resulting in strong financial incentives for the data center operators to build in India. And let's actually look at some of the policies that different states have today. Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Karnataka, 
हरियाणा यूपी एंड वेस्ट बंगाल ऑल ऑफर अ स्टैंप ड्यूटी एग्जेम्शन फॉर बिल्डिंग अ डेटा सेंटर दे ऑल ऑफर एन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ड्यूटी एग्जेम्शन दे ऑल ऑफर कैपिटल एंड कैपेक्स सपोर्ट फॉर बिल्डिंग आउट द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड टू अ ग्रेट डिग्री इफ यू डिसाइड टू यूज ग्रीन और रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी यू विल गेट फर्दर सब्सिडीज इन ईच ऑफ दीज स्टेट इट मीन दैट दी ऑपरेटिंग एक्सपेंस और ऑपेक्स ऑफ अ डेटा सेंटर इज अप्रोक्सिमेटली फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ रेवेन्यू Which, if it were hundred rupees, is forty rupees. You will pause for a minute and say, "Wait a minute. If there is a forty percent opex, then this is probably a fifty to sixty percent EBITDA business, which is fantastic." And I completely agree with you. But remember that at its core, a co-location data center business is a capex-heavy business. You have to buy the land parcel, build the superstructure, build the HVAC and the other utilities around the superstructure, and therefore you take on debt to do this construction work. And therefore, after you account for financing costs, you would typically see that the yield on this type of a data center is about twelve to fifteen percent. Now that you've seen what the revenue book let's have a quick look at the capital book for every 1 megawatt of colocation data center capacity the total capex is about 50 crore rupees and typically on these type of greenfield projects you either have one to one debt to equity financing or you do 60% debt 40% equity financing And this brings us to the final part of today's breakdown. How can you as an individual investor participate in this AI super cycle? And you will notice that almost all of the data center plays that exist today in India are only accessible through conglomerates. Bharti Airtel Group owns Nextra, Reliance Industries owns Reliance Intelligence which is newly incorporated and Adani Enterprises owns Adani Connex. In addition to this, India's top 5 data center providers are not publicly listed companies. Now given the fact that we as retail investors are not able to access a pure play data center operator as of today the next best thing for us is to access ancillaries or picks and shovels and you could pick anything you want here real estate power cooling epc computer servers and integration and across each of these ancillaries you will find one or more listed companies for example in power you could have schneider electric in cooling blue star in epc lnt in connectivity sterlite technologies in computer servers and integrations netweb e2e and several other players Now that you as a retail investor are aware there is a pure play data center and an ancillary to data center opportunity we come to the end of today's breakdown data centers will be one of the fastest growing industries in india we already tripled our capacity in the past 5 years and we are expecting to triple or quadruple our capacity in the next 5 years the tailwinds are very clear it is 5g penetration smartphone penetration demand driven by ai workloads and localization that is driven by domestic regulations when you put these tailwinds together and you see the capex spent you just know that data centers are a very very interesting asset class and industry in our country and it goes without saying that the risks are not just well articulated they are well known there is a material risk that the ai super cycle might not pan out we will overbuild capacity and it will result in major capital loss given this context data centers remain a high risk high reward sector for financial and non financial investors to continue to explore the indian market that's all from us on part 1 of our all about data center series at breakdown thank you so much until next time